Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I did a Mopar News episode a few weeks ago where I talked a bit about the penalties that Dodge faces for continuing to produce the Hemi engines in their muscle cars. And today I wanted to elaborate on that topic and go more in depth investigating what the rules and regulations are, exactly how many penalties they face with some big calculations in math, and why they're really making a shift towards producing electric vehicles. So let's get started here. First, an important part of the video, what is CAF, or Corporate Average Fuel Economy Standards? These are the regulations for the U.S., first introduced in 1975 by the U.S. Congress as a response to the 1973 to 1974 Arab oil embargo, as that targeted nations that had supported Israel during the 1973 October War and limited or banned the petroleum exports to certain countries, including Canada, the U.S., the U.K., Netherlands, Japan, and others. This led to an oil shock, with prices across the world reaching over $12 a barrel and even higher in the U.S. The goal of CAF has been to improve the average fuel economy of passenger cars for sale in the U.S., and instead of offering incentives or changing gas prices, they just make it more costly for auto manufacturers to build inefficient vehicles by imposing financial penalties. CAF regulations are always expressed in miles per U.S. gallon, or MPG, of a manufacturer's fleet each year, and they apply to passenger cars and trucks that have a gross vehicle weight rating of 8,500 pounds or less that are for sale in the U.S. So now we'll go over the penalties, and there are going to be some limitations to my data and findings. Obviously, it's going to be an estimate. I tried to get as close as I could, as the math for actually determining a vehicle's fuel economy is very complicated, but I did manage to find pretty much every variable for 2023 to do the equation, and do what I think is a very accurate calculation that makes some sense. The penalty calculations involve a vehicle's footprint as the basis for CO2 emissions and the fuel economy number as well. So CAF was reformed in 2011, so each manufacturer's required level of CAF was based on target levels that were set according to vehicle size. And the targets are assigned according to a vehicle's footprint, which is the product of the average track width, which is the distance between the center line of the tires, and the wheelbase. So that's the distance between the centers of the axles. And that will give you a total MPG number for compliance when you plug that into the equation. The number is then compared across the manufacturer's fleet average fuel economy in a given model year. But of course, individual vehicles will raise that and individually will have greater fines. You can see a screenshot of a couple of different vehicles and their compliance ratings. So like a Camry and an S-Class, but I want to get more exact for Dodge today. So first, the Charger's footprint is as shown, 53.2 square feet. And using that, here's a shot of the math that I've done here. With that plugged in as x for our equation, and all the other variables I've found online, we can get a total compliance of 44.08 mpg for the charger for 2023. In order to calculate the fines, I wanted to get the same number that was applied to the other years from 2015 and onwards, but of course that's very challenging as it's hard to find all the variables and then do the math. So I'm estimating the mpg for each year going back to 2015, and it ends up being decreasing an average of 1.41 mpg per year. Next, we need the estimated production of each Hemi per year, so each of the engines, and I've taken individual percentages out of the 2019 and 2020 years that I had access to. So I had access to the individual trim level sold each of those years. So that means looking at how many 3.6 liter, 5.7 liter, 6.4 liter, and 6.2 liters were sold each year of the total, and then I've taken an average of those two years percentages, which you can find on screen. So that then allows us to calculate a decent estimate for fees for each Charger V8 engine. The compliance fees are applied on total vehicles produced, so for simplicity's sake, I will assume that total sales equals total production for each given year. That's obviously not the case, but there's no way to find out the exact total production. Next we have our actual dollar penalty calculation. These penalties are a dollar amount for every 0.1 mpg that a car is over the target number, so this calculation is the CAF MPG target number minus the Charger MPG number divided by 0.1 times the fine. So that fine was 550 before 2019, $14 for 2019 to 2021, and $15 from 2022 onwards so far. That gives us a fine per car, and then we multiply the percentage of each of those Hemi engines times the total Charger production for that year, multiplied by the fine per car, and that gives us the total penalty that Dodge is paying each year across each of the V8 engines. We can see that the Charger alone cost Atlantis over $114 million US for just the V8 models 
for just 2023 on just American Chargers, not taking into account global production either. I will say the penalties were far less earlier on, so some previous numbers have been released, and the figures show that Stellantis paid $156.6 million combined for 2016 and 2017, and another $235.5 million for 2018 and 2019 model years. But again, that was back when the fines were at $5.50 per 0.1 MPG over. Now the fines have almost tripled, so Stellantis is going to be paying a hefty price if they wanted to keep producing those Hemi V8s. On to the Challenger, the EPA ratings are the same as the Charger for the three V8 engines, but the footprint is smaller at 51.3 square feet, so the MPG target is just slightly higher at 45.02 for 2023. Otherwise, everything will be shown on screen the same way as the Charger, so pause if you want to see anything for longer. Here's the calculation, or the equations. Here's the MPG targets per year. Again, I assumed it's 1.41 MPG per year less as we go back, like with the Charger. Here's the sales totals, followed by the percentage of total sales for each engine. And finally, here's the penalty calculations. So here the fines per car are more as the Challenger footprint is smaller than the Charger, while the EPA ratings are the same, but overall the fines are less as the Challenger sells less than the Charger does. So with all these staggering fines, it's more clear to understand why Dodge is choosing to shift to making electric vehicles and also the 3 liter twin turbocharged Hurricane inline 6 cylinder engines that are going to replace the Hemis going forward. For the Hurricanes, even if they are 15-20% to 20 more efficient as advertised, that makes a difference of many millions of dollars less that Dodge and Stellantis would have to pay for compliance fines. And as for the EVs, like the upcoming 2024 Dodge Charger Daytona, they consume no gas and have high MPG numbers when converted from electricity, so this helps Stellantis as a whole with paying less fines as well. This is what it's all about, unfortunately, what it's come to. Dodge knows their enthusiasts love the Hemi engines, and it's not like they aren't listening to what we want, but rather they likely feel forced and are making a financial business decision to try to appease to customers with powerful performance cars while raising the fuel efficiency at the same time and reducing their fines in the short and long-term future. There's a line to draw for everyone, and with Dodge paying over $4,000 a car in compliance fees for the 5.7 liter and 6.4 liter engines, and up to $4,500 per Hellcat vehicle, they've decided enough is enough with the Hemi engines. Just a quick note here before we finish, I'm not here to comment on anything political or give my CAF opinion or EPA opinion on what they do is right or wrong. You guys all know I love the Hemis and I own two Hemi powered vehicles myself, so there's your answer for that. I just wanted to make this video to state the facts and shine some light into Dodge's decision making and the economics behind it, because this info that I showed here today is not readily or easily available anywhere. So that's it for today's video. What did you think about everything that we talked about? Were you surprised by the penalties? Or do you have more sympathy for Dodge now? Or not? Let me know down in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for all your Mopar content. And I'll see you in the next video.